Saram to all of you. Welcome back to the continuity of the chapter of atoms, molecules and chemical arithmetics. So having seen certain basic aspects of all these, now we are going to get into the calculation that are being involved involving various atoms which tend to form molecules in nature. So the basic impact of this is going to be the understanding of periodic table. So as being conveyed in the earlier parts, it is important for you to know the elements, atomic number and mass number of the first 20 elements that are there in the periodic table starting from hydrogen till calcium. So that is the prerequisite knowledge that you need to have if we are to continue these parts. So here now what we are going to discuss is about the masses of various atoms which are going to be present which can actually be extracted from the periodic table but that will have to be known mentally also. So utilizing that we tend to form or find masses of various elements and compounds. So first let us see the basic aspects of this we have something called as atomic mass unit which is nothing but so the calculative aspect of this is as a standard carbon was chosen. Now this standard was uh, chosen earlier it was hydrogen but then uh, because hydrogen cannot have any neutrons in it so therefore carbon also being in large quantities was chosen as a particular standard in that case. So having chosen carbon as the standard atomic mass unit was defined as mass exactly equal to 1 twelfth the mass of carbon C12. Now understand that the mass of carbon is also 12. We know it very well. So what do you mean by this 112 into 12 is nothing but it comes back to 1 that we call it as atomic mass unit. So as a standard definition atomic mass unit is nothing but the mass of 1 till the mass of carbon atom. So that is what a mathematical expression is given. There are various ways to denote this one is atomic mass unit which we call it as AMU. As an IUPAC symbol, we use it as small u, which is also called as unified mass. So along with this, we also have something called as relative mass. So what happened was this atomic mass unit was only spoken with respect to carbon. But then we cannot just stick on to carbon. So we have to look at the masses of other elements also. So having taken this as carbon, relative mass means what? Take one as a standard and compare its weight with other atoms. Like for example, if we tend to see. If you see in the periodic table, we have mass of oxygen to be at 16 gram. Atomic number is 8, whereas mass number is seen to be 16 in that. What does that 16 mean is, that 16 is nothing but it is in comparison to carbon which is present. So relative masses of atoms or molecules are the number of times each atom or molecule is heavier than 1 12th the mass of one carbon atom. What does this indicate? 1 12th of mass of one carbon atom is the single unit part. What 16 indicates for oxygen is that it is 16 times heavier than the standard that you have taken. Now this was for oxygen, it can be different for different elements. We see that hydrogen mass is 1, we see nitrogen mass to be 14. What it essentially means is that standard is this 1 12th the mass of C12. To that standard, we have other masses which have been present. So this is just the definitive aspect of this but what is more important for us is how to apply it and find out masses of various elements. So that we will be seeing it in the further parts now where we are going to take up some examples. Calculate the molar mass of ammonia. Now here the formula is given sometimes formula may not be given to you as you go in your further studies you will have to know it because once again just to repeat it. At your level, you need to know all the elements from 1 to 20, its atomic number as well as mass number. So how do you calculate this molar mass now? Now in ammonia, we find that there is one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. From periodic table, I know that mass of nitrogen is 14 into 1 because there is only one. Then mass of hydrogen in from periodic table, we know it to be 1, but we have three hydrogens. So what's the calculation here? 14 and 3 total comes to 17. 17 U as unified mass you can keep or 17 gram because it is in gram molecular masses also you can take. So how do we calculate this is this requires a prerequisite knowledge from periodic table that nitrogen has a mass of 14, 
hydrogen has a mass of 1. So, this is all the calculation, but then from exam point of view, if you have write it, how should be your representation? Your representation should be that from the table, from periodic table, we have that mass of nitrogen. So, this is how we have to cleanly represent everything mass of nitrogen. So, what is the mass of nitrogen? We know it to be 14 U. Similarly, we also know that mass of hydrogen. So, mass of hydrogen, this again is from periodic table, uh, this is going to be 1 U. And uh, further you have to write it here that you have one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. Therefore, the total mass is going to be 17 U in this case. Similar to this, now the procedures are going to be exactly similar. We are just going to take further examples in this case. The second example, lithium chloride. Once again, as I told you, basis remains the periodic table. Mass of lithium, if you find out from periodic table is 7. Mass of chlorine is 35.5. Now, why is this 0.5? Is because you have studied in lower classes that there are isotopes of elements also possible. So, chlorine actually has an isotopic form of 35 mass and 37 mass. So, together the overall mass available in nature is 35.5. So, what is the total mass of this part now? 7 plus uh, 35.5. You can See to it that the overall mass is 42.5 U. So, I am just dealing here with calculative aspects. The write up is exactly the same mass of lithium is equal to 7 U, mass of chlorine is equal to 35.5 U. That is the direct uh, calculation that we tend to do. Just to take up another example, uh, some more atoms are being involved there. Name of that compound is sodium sulphate. SO4 is sulphate, Na is sodium. Once again, if you have to go in simpler form, sodium, two atoms are there. Sulphur, one atom is there. Sulphate is a total compound, but sulphur is an individual atom. And oxygen, we have four atoms. So, first I have written the number of species which are there. Then, mass of sodium. Each sodium mass is 23. How did you get it? From periodic table. Mass of sulfur, it is 32. Mass of oxygen is 16. So, then just go for the calculation. Simple, direct, straightforward calculations. 23 into 2 is 46. 32 into 1 is 32. 16 into 4 is 64. Go for the entire uh, count of this. This is 8 and 12. This is 5, 8 and uh, 6, 4, T. So, this is the overall mass of sodium sulphate which we can find out. So, these are three examples. Just another one example. Let us take up some more atoms are being involved there. Calcium, we have three atoms. Now, PO4 twice. What does that mean? It indicates that that entire PO4, see calcium has a valency of plus 2. We have studied about valencies in lower classes. Valencies are combining properties and calcium has plus 2, whereas uh, PO4 has minus 3. So, when you write a formula, what do you tend to do is you tend to cross it. So, what happens there? It will become Ca3 because Ca and 3, then PO4. This entire PO4 is to be multiplied by 2 because this 2 is applicable for entire thing. So, if you utilize that factor here now, phosphorus you have, so just if you go back now, calcium there are 3, okay. Phosphorus is single one here, but it is twice being shown there. So, 2 phosphorus are available. Oxygen, if you see, it is PO4. Oxygen 4, but again into 2. So, it will become 8. Now, 3 into calcium, calcium mass is 40. Periodic table, phosphorus mass, uh, if you see from the periodic table, atomic number is uh, 15, whereas phosphorus is 31 and oxygen as uh, we generally use it, it is 16. Calculate these parts, it will be 120, 40 into 3, 120. 31 into 2 is 62. Then uh, 16 into 8 is uh, 128. Just to go forward, uh, utilize the, all the calculations. It will be 10, 3, 9, and 11, and then it will be 310. So, this is going to be the mass of calcium phosphate which has been present there. Okay? So, this is how we understand various types of compounds which have been present. How do we calculate? Simply with utilizing the formulations and all which are there.
now we are going to see some examples which are a little different now all this time we simply were picking up masses from the periodic table we were utilizing the value and just calculating it off now involves a little more chemistry now what is the basic for this is that we have already seen something called as avogadro number so what is this avogadro number it tells that one mole of a compound is equal to its uh, molar mass for carbon it is 12 and this one mole of a compound can have 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms or molecules depends on what type of species are there now what does this question ask you find out the mass of c12 they are asking you to find out mass of c12 c12 mass you know but they are asking that would contain 7 into 10 raised to power 19 c12 atoms what does it mean see this is what we know that one mole is nothing but equivalent to 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms and we also know that this is also equal to 12 gram of carbon these are all the basics that we have studied now for our calculation we have nothing to do with moles what we need to do is we are given some amount of atoms we have to find out mass so we know that 6.022 so in the in these parts if you generally see here 12 gram of carbon will have 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 atoms this is a well known factor for us how many atoms they have given in the question it is 7.0 into 10 raised to power 19 atoms and they are asking you find out the mass so it is more like a cross multiplication factor that's it this is a known factor 12 uh, gram of carbon is so many atoms what about this factor so how do you do this cross multiplication so question mark so these are the crossing multiplication 7.0 into 10 raised to my power 19 into 12 divided by 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 undertake these calculations how you can undertake this 10 raised to 19 and down it is 10 raised to 23 which means that below there is 10 power 4 extra which is there and if it is in denominator and if you send this to numerator we always know the mathematical formulations a plus m into a plus n will be equal to a plus a power m m plus n right so that formulation if you want you can always uh, take it here this will be almost like this will be one and this will be two almost it may not be exactly similar almost it will be same so this will be 14 into 10 raised to minus 4 since they are asking the mass of that compound we can call it in terms of grams so how did this 10 raised to minus 4 come just to repeat it 10 raised to 19 was here 10 raised to 23 was in the denominator that has gone up so it has formed back to 10 raised to minus 4 in this case so this is one type of problems that we can solve when we utilize the mass of a compound the number of atoms this is nothing but the avogadro number which is present so having seen these type of problems now we have another one type which is asking us the number of molecules first they happen to ask us in the starting problems if you see they were asking us directly the mass and they were giving the formula then we had something relationship between mass and atoms and now it is the relationship between molecules and weight so how do you find it how many molecules are present in 200 gram sample of nh3 nh3 is nothing but ammonia so what does uh, one mole of ammonia contain now this is the basic part this is what you will have to know by yourselves one mole of ammonia irrespective of anybody will definitely contain 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 molecules this is a well known factor for us and since it is ammonia we have to now find out the mass which you had actually found out in the first question in this part ammonia was in, his, uh, in the entire mass nitrogen was 14 hydrogen was 1 into 3 so the total mass was 17 gram of NH3. So, what do I uh, am doing here? 1 mole of NH3 is nothing but it is this Avogadro number and also the molar mass of the compound. So, where is my relationship in the question now? In the question, what they are doing is they have taken the mass and they are asking the number of molecules. So, what it means is this is the unknown factor, whereas the mass given here is 200 gram of NH3. I have nothing to do with the moles because this they are not touched upon in the question. So how do we do this again? Once again cross multiplication. So what is the crossing here? Question mark into 17 question mark essentially you can take it as x also. 
Now, what is the other cross that we have? 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 into 200 divided by 17 because this was the multiplying factor. So, if you just do this calculation, final answer, I'll leave it to you so that you can do the simple mathematical calculation which has been present here. So, what is important here from the chemistry point of view understanding is that one mole of this compound will always be equal to Avogadro number along with this it will also be equal to the molar mass and then we can calculate it further. So, this is about the interrelationship between number of molecules and uh, mass of the compound. Similarly, we have another one example here. This is a given thing now for you. Molar mass of nitrogen is 14 gram per mole. Now, even if it is not given, you have to know it that nitrogen atomic number is 7, mass is 14. What they are asking is what is the mass of one atom and one molecule of nitrogen. So, they are asking the overall mass which is being present. So, if you see here per mole the mass of nitrogen is 14 gram. Here first thing that we have to understand is what do you mean by one atom, what do you mean by one molecule that is an important part. We know very well that gas molecules cannot stay together because they are freely moving and since they are freely moving if we have to maintain the stability it is important you combine them. Therefore, you can see that solid metals can stay as it is sodium, potassium, magnesium everything is present as monoatomic form. What do you mean by monoatomic? Mono means single individual atoms. But when you go for gases, you cannot write O as O, it has to be O2 because it is a gas, it cannot be held together. So, if it has to be held together, all those come in diatomic forms. So, the many gases that we know O2, N2, Cl2, H2, even hydrogen also, all this are diatomic in nature. So, the moment they ask you what is the mass of one atom of and one molecule of nitrogen, it means that they are asking what is the mass of N, what is the mass of N2 because molecule of nitrogen is N2, molecule is the stablest form, atom is the simplest form. So, what is one uh, mass of one atom of nitrogen, it is already given here, molar mass was given here, so this is definitely 14 gram. Then what is mass of one molecule of nitrogen, that will be 14 into 2 because each molecule of nitrogen is having two atoms of nitrogen. Therefore, it will be 14 into 2 which will be equal to 28. So, this is how we see the mass calculations of various compounds, various elements also can be calculated in this way. So, having seen so many examples, just uh, last uh, through and through for this, we have molar masses, uh, just I have asked you in the question, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen chloride is HCl, calculate the molar mass of argon atoms. So, each atom mass they are given now. So, what you have to do? You have to multiply this by Avogadro number because one atom. But the molar argon atoms means what argon as a stable will form 6.022 into 10 to 23. So, you will have to multiply that just as an idea I am giving you. Calculate the mass of one mole of potassium nitrate. One mole essentially means KNO3 mass, whatever it is there that you have to calculate. The formula of sodium sulfate, uh, sodium phosphate is Na3PO4 what is the mass of 0 0.146 mole of Na3PO4. So, how you have to do this, I will just give an idea. First, find out the mass of this compound. They are given, in fact, they are given masses of everybody, sodium, phosphorus and oxygen, all these compounds they are given. So, first find out the mass of that, that will be equal to 1 mole. Now, 1 mole mass will be whatever you have calculated, then you calculate for 0 0.146 mole, which will again be like a cross multiplication. So, this is all that we have in this part and once we get a strong grip in this, we can then look out for further concepts where we will have interrelationships between moles, molecules, atoms as well as mass in this case. Hope you understood well. Thank you and see you again in the next part. Sairam.